Hello, and thank you everyone at State of the Net. I'm Kathy McMorris Rogers. I'm the Republican leader of the House Energy and Commerce Committee. It's great to participate with all of you at State of the Net again this year. As we begin this new Congress, Republicans on energy and commerce are ready to work and unleash innovation so America wins a future in emerging tech. Our goal is to build on our efforts last year in our global competitiveness package that will reduce barriers to AI, Internet of Things, quantum computing, blockchain, unmanned delivery services, and other emerging technologies. Although this started as a Republican-only agenda last May, we built bipartisan support. Emerging tech and American leadership should not be a partisan issue. We have all invested interest in seeing American lead, and thankfully, we were able to get the American Compete Act signed into law at the end of the year. But our work is just beginning. The American Compete Act, including my leading bill, which is designed to promote the advancement of artificial intelligence. This bill, the Generating Artificial Intelligence Networking Security Act, or the GAINS Act, directs the Department of Commerce to look at adoption barriers and spur development of AI. It also includes an assessment of vulnerabilities in the AI supply chain and asks the Department for recommendations to address identified risk, especially from China. China has very different values than we do when it comes to emerging technologies. The Chinese Communist Party is actually using artificial intelligence to track down and suppress minorities and they're empowering other authoritarian regimes. Such behavior is evil, and we must work with our allies to counter China. Unfortunately, I'm very concerned with what I'm seeing coming out of Europe. Europe is becoming increasingly protectionist by targeting American technology companies with digital service taxes and other initiatives designed solely to target our companies. I'm not happy, I'm certainly not happy with big tech, but I believe we can still promote American global leadership while not turning a blind eye to problems we see here at home. I call on our allies to work with us. We must ensure emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence are developed with Western values. To counter and isolate China, it must be a collaborative approach. But yeah, by upholding our American values for human rights and dignity, we can use artificial intelligence as a force for good and save people's lives. We can and we must win the future in artificial intelligence. AI technology and deep learning algorithms can help us detect cancers earlier and more quickly. Clinical trials are already making major breakthroughs to diagnose cancers. And it's been a critical asset in combating the coronavirus by helping our top researchers and scientists speed up the development and the discovery of treatments and vaccines. While we're working on this package of emerging tech, even before the coronavirus hit, the virus and all the vulnerabilities it has exposed made our global competitive agenda even more urgent. It's proof that only America is uniquely qualified to lead on forward-thinking solutions that promote both consumer protection, innovation, and most importantly, human rights. The technologies I've mentioned already are just some examples, but there's also autonomous vehicles, energy, healthcare, and making sure that the United States continues to lead in the race to 5G. Over the past four years, Congress and the FCC under Chairman Pai's leadership have made significant progress in bringing the next generation of wireless communications to Americans. We've made unprecedented amounts of spectrum available to the private sector for commercial deployment. And the FCC recently completed the highest grossing spectrum auction in history. Congress also directed the FCC to auction 100 megahertz of valuable federal mid-band spectrum in the three gigahertz band for commercial use by the end of the year. These are big steps forward and we must continue this aggressive approach to maintain U.S. leadership. We also established a new broadband grant program at NTIA to make sure unserved Americans get connected. Now we must ensure that the money goes to where it's intended and work to push permitting reforms to make sure that broadband and 5G infrastructure 
can get deployed as quickly as possible. Enhancing our cybersecurity is also a top priority. The solar winds attack has highlighted this urgency. While I was pleased Congress passed and President Trump signed into law my extension of the U.S. Safe Web Act to increase cooperation with foreign law enforcement authorities, it's clear that more needs to be done. Congress also funded the Secure and Trusted Communications Act to rip and replace network equipment that poses a national security threat. We look forward to working with the FCC to make sure the program is implemented as intended and that our networks are secure. The security of our electrical grid is also a key priority for energy and commerce Republicans. The threats to our grid from foreign actors are real and constant. I was pleased to see the previous administration's executive order to protect the U.S. bulk power system from cybersecurity threats, particularly components from foreign adversaries. Last month, the Department of Energy issued a follow-up order specifically prohibiting certain utilities from pr procuring certain bulk power components from China in order to diminish the ability of our foreign adversaries to target our critical electrical infrastructure. However, on his first day, President Biden issued an order freezing the DOE bulk power executive order from last year. In the wake of a massive cybersecurity attack from a foreign actor on DOE and other federal agencies, it is incredibly disappointing that President Biden has taken this action to weaken our grid. I hope that the Biden administration will reconsider that decision as quickly as possible. Our grid is too critical to leave it vulnerable to hostile efforts of China and other foreign adversaries. These critical issues put the House Energy and Commerce Committee at the center of the race to maintain American leadership and competitiveness. Our mission is to win the future and keep America as the best place to make scientific breakthroughs, save lives, and raise people's standard of living. If we get these policies right, we can unleash and create a new era of innovation and entrepreneurship. As we get to work this Congress, we'll have innovators like you in mind. And don't hesitate to reach out and connect with me and my team. Have a great State of the Net. Thank you.